Exactly. Hello, everybody. Welcome. We've got a big story today that shocked you, Zoe. Yes, I cannot believe it. We're looking at household food waste. Families are basically throwing out their cold, hard cash. Put it in the bin and they take out the garbage. Mm. Oh, there's one missing here. But the stats in this story are fascinating. And you know what's grabbed my attention Tell as me. well? The story of people living every day with chronic pain. You know what? There are so many Australians suffering daily out there. But we do have some help, so let's get on with the show. Come on, this way. Today, we learn which health checks can help stop cancer in its tracks. Also save thousands of dollars and the planet at the same time by cutting out food waste. The average Australian household is throwing away almost $4,000 a year. And we finally have good news for those low-carb dieters who miss their white rice. Inspiration advice and good food, we've got a show packed with all that plus more. It just feels good to let it all out. Let's all get well, stay well, live well and look fabulous. Right here in the House of Wellness. Good to have you here, team. Hey, it's another inspiring day here on the House of Wellness. Zoe, you're looking particularly inspired. I am. Too. I am inspired because today we meet one of the most amazing Aussies ever, athlete, author, mentor, mum. She's everything. She's actually one of my personal heroes, Turia Pitt. You've been excited about this for oh, so on the way. She's an amazing woman and an accident, as you probably know, left her with burns to <laughs> some 65% of her body. She's never given up and we'll have more with Turia a little bit later on. Jo, looking lovely in lavender as well. Oh, look at us matchy, matchy, matchy. I do love it. Well, well, today my big topic is chronic pain. Did you know that one in five Aussies live their lives in pain constantly? And that's including adolescents and little puppers, children oh, yeah. as well. It is a real problem. It's so awful, but we're going to get them some help. I hope right, so. Jo? That's okay. my plan. And GQ, always a pleasure having you on the couch. Thank you, Zoe. What is coming up? Well, I'm looking forward to the pain story as well, but we're going to be talking today about a, an antiseptic, a urinary antiseptic, Oh. So we're talking bladder health today. All right, looking forward to that one. Ooh. But James Tobin's going to kick us off today with something a lot of families don't think about, you guys, and we'll discuss this, food waste. Mm. You know, as a nation, food waste is costing Australia an estimated $20 billion Whoa. a year. $20 billion. So maybe it is time to pay attention to what we throw out. From hit TV shows to celebrity chefs and best-selling cookbooks, there's no denying we Aussies certainly love hearing about food. But there's one food story that's often forgotten. One out of five shopping bags of food we buy ends up in landfill. That probably doesn't sound like that much, but when you do that 52 weeks a year, and it's happening in every family home across Australia, with a massive 2.5 million tonnes of food ending up in landfill and all of it coming from our homes, it adds up. Researchers have put a figure on that bill too. It's 20 billion bucks. That's billion with a B. That means the average Australian household is throwing away almost $4,000 a year. I think it's time to lift the lid on food waste. The Santa Marias are your typical Aussie family. And for the next week, they've volunteered to be my food waste research assistants. I want to talk about your rubbish bin. Have you guys thought much about what happens with that food waste? Well, not no. usually because we kind of just chuck it in the bin and, and then it's gone. Rid of it. it get um, new food, new fresh food, and just keeps. Yeah, magical mum fairy refill yeah. the fish. <laughs> so I've set up an experiment to see how easy it is for your normal family to eliminate food waste from the bin completely. So today I've got a whole bunch of people lined up that can help with that process. Would you like to meet them? Yeah. Yes. Okay. First stop, inspiration. Hi guys, how are we? Hi. Hi. I'm Annabelle. Oz Harvest started in 2004 and has grown into an international operation with a fleet of 55 bright yellow trucks that rescue over 180 tonnes of food from landfill every week. So if there's one person who knows how to make a difference with waste, it's Oz Harvest's founder, Ronnie Khan. So what's the one tip you can give them to be better with food waste? The biggest impact you'd have is if you made a shopping list before you went shopping. Look in your pantry, look in your fridge, and take into account that the freezer is like a pause button. 
because it'll save you money. Okay. That's the at the end of the day, that's a great incentive. Down at the local shops, the girls get their first taste of the true scale of this issue, picking up crates of food that are still perfectly good but can no longer be sold. How many crates is that? I think we're looking about 10 there. That's a lot of food. It's a lot of food. And that's one Woolworth. It's just one. We visit sort of 15 in a day. And so that would have gone into landfill. Straight into the bin, yeah. Today, we're helping give this food donated by Woolies to one of the 1,300 charities that Oz Harvest supports. Instead of wasted landfill, this will now fill the bellies of people who would otherwise go hungry. We cater anywhere between uh, to 80 to 100 people. For one, for the fact that we're getting this from Oz Harvest, we wouldn't survive. With Ronnie's tips, it's likely that the Santa Maria's will be able to dramatically reduce their food waste. But to eliminate it completely, they need to make some adjustments back at Research HQ, AKA the Santa Maria's house. Well, we're gonna go through three things today to make sure you guys are completely kitted out. Enter Justin from Compost Revolution. He's an educator, mad worm spotter, and the bloke who's setting the family up with all the latest whiz-bang composting gadgets. And then we'll have a worm farm. Um, worms, when they get up to speed, will probably go through about two kilograms of food scraps a day, which is absolutely amazing. As we've seen, the scale of Australia's food waste issue is mind-boggling. But with the help of a few friends like these little dynamos... Oh, he's huge. ..you can make a huge impact. So, Sarah, one week on, where's your food waste? I've got a couple of days in the compost bin. Yeah, but that's going to the worms, yeah. so that doesn't really count. No. So there's effectively no food waste. What yeah. a transformation in one week. Yeah. By simply composting your food scraps at home, the average Aussie home can prevent 120 kilos of landfill every year. To give you a mental picture, if everyone got on board, that's the weight of over three quarters of a million adult elephants a year. And with almost 4,000 bucks extra to spend, your kids may have a few holiday suggestions. <laughs> so, where's your favourite holiday destination? Italy. Italy. <laughs> <laughs> mm, That'd be nice. Italy would be nice. What about those worms? I can't believe how much they can churn through in a day. Two kilos worth of waste. Well, and why is it going to the worms, Ed? <laughs> Look at this. This. So, here we have a week's worth of shopping okay. for a family of four. So, two kids, two adults. This yep. is what you're going to see, usually, for that family. 20% of that, a fifth... Mm -hmm. is being wasted. So if we've... Okay. Can you hold that? Oh, yeah. And I'm just going to load you up. No, oh, no, I reckon we can... Like, this okay. is more than that. It's more it's you like, put on it's that. Meat. Yeah. It's, you know, gorgeous. Look, bread. I mean, how often do you throw out bread? Because you've bought too much. Is that's what... Tell Second me, up. how is this happening? Do you know Sorry. what? As a mum and a nutritionist, it's quite frustrating because I think it's a bit misleading from the shopping side of things. We, you know, we're encouraged to upscale, to buy more. But if you're not using that, we are going to waste that. Put everything that you need on your phone, create a list, be planned, be organised, because what that will do is reduce our overall waste. OK, because so that's going to stop us from buying too much. That's and the key thing to begin with. I've got to remember not to buy kale, because <laughs> I always throw it out. Okay. I mean, it's a dream that I might eat it one day, but <laughs> I, I it on there. give it up. And there's so much we can obviously make with the leftover. I mean, for example, I make savoury and sweet muffins, but I'll often use the leftover yoghurt instead of milk. Oh, if I'm using oh. leftover bread, I'll make a pantanella salad, so that's cutting mm. up the bread. You can put olive oil. I can put that in the fridge, in the freezer for days. Okay, so this is what I want to know, because I'm not, I'm not, you know, <laughs> educated in this. I'm just a Cooking mom. Cooking savvy. I'm just a mum, so. <laughs> well, how about that? I don't, I don't know what I can freeze, even if I have yeah. made leftovers. So the rule of thumb when it comes to actually what we can store and what we can't is no more than two to three days in a fridge. Mm -hmm. When you're freezing food, you're going to lose a level of hydration. So the key, a little trick to do is put a little olive oil on top of the food that you're freezing. Oh. When you thaw that food, that will absorb into the food, making it more moist and tasty. And that way, you know, if you are freezing the food, it's still going to hold up awesome and taste delicious. So, but can we freeze all foods? Look, in theory, you can, but okay. some foods aren't going to hold up as well. Obviously, salad and fresh produce oh, is not yeah. going to hold up as well. The cooked food, 90% of the time, you really can freeze, and it's quite an easy way. The other thing also is portion control. If you're freezing something or if you're trying to be organised with your shopping, have a little think about what your portions are and mm. try and actually be relative to that portion. Mm. So let's do some mm. of the sums here. This is a week's shop. Works out to be about, what, 365 Ooh. bucks? Show me the money. So a fifth of that is 70 bucks. Yep. Okay. Well, and if we added that up... 
per year times 52 weeks. That, I'm told, is $3,800. Yeah. <laughs> According to my calculator. The mathematical skills. <laughs> now, if you're good for, say, 10 years, it adds up to something important like $38,000. What could you buy with 38 oh, grand? Mm. Nice, shiny. Oh, look, 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 look at us with our bobble oh, heads. Let's go on a road trip. <laughs> Over 10 years, though, you could take eight family trips to Disneyland oh, together. Man, I've got the nice <laughs> Oh, I love it. But because we're wasting 20% of our food, it's all just going in the bin. What in a silly thing. Oh, the bin. No. You get the idea, right? <laughs> it's going in the bin. Yes. So, yes. there we go. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, don't be wasters. And have a look uh, at your waste over a couple of weeks. See how it stacks up as well. Get yourself some hard-working worms. I'll put it in a box in the garage or something. Yeah. You just see what you've got there, yeah. Thanks, you guys. Good job. Stay with us. Lots of great information still to come after the break here on the House of Wellness. Later, she's an athlete, an author, a mother and a survivor with a story that will inspire you beyond belief. But next, we learn about living with chronic pain. All that and more after the break here on the House of Wellness. Here's a painful conversation for you. We all experience pain in one form or another, physical, mental, and sometimes chronic, but unrelieved pain is a major issue. One in five of all Australians live with chronic pain, and one in three Aussies over 65 deal with it daily. And its cost to the Australian economy is estimated at around $34.3 billion a year. Up to 80% of people living with chronic pain are going without treatment that could improve their quality of life. So, Brody Young hit the streets to find out who is in pain and how they're dealing with it. Yes, I do have a few joints, aches and pains. I take quite a few medications. Daily. It's um, a little bit of denial as I get older. I, I train physically, so it's a matter of trying to accept what I can no longer do that I used to do in my 20s and try not to complain about it. You know, mood stabilisers, antidepressant type things. Yeah, I actually have shoulder pain today. I'm not giving out massages or anything, <laughs> so I uh, get them into uh, wellness clinics and get this pain sorted out from a holistic level. Hypnosis. Hypnosis? Hypnosis. We haven't got that yet today. I think probably the same amount of pain as everyone else, you know, headaches, uh, you know, like a sports injury maybe, like a bad knee, those sorts of things. I've got a, a arthritis thing called seriatic arthritis and it's a bit debilitating, but we're in control of it at the moment. What was your uh, pain level? My pain level was a 7 out of 10 and, um, yeah, my bone popped out of my skin, so definitely. <laughs> I reckon that's more than a 7 out of 10. That That's is off the charts in pain. Full on. Nice to have you back. That certainly uh, shows pain doesn't discriminate, right? It, it can affect uh, all of us at some stage of our lives. But we thought we'd talk a little bit more about it. Yeah, because we've always assumed that the pain will ease once an injury has healed. But as we said earlier, for one in five Australians, the pain actually never goes away. So well, that is our hot topic for today. Let's make it a big one too. Let's delve into it a little bit deeper. We're joined by Dr Roberta Chow. You're a GP but also with a, a specialist I, area in I have pain. a special interest in pain. OK, well you're the one to help define what chronic pain actually is then first up. Mm. Chronic pain is pain that lasts beyond three months. Oh, right. And it can last, once it's gone past that three month period, it can often go on for years and years and years. And that is truly depressing and mm. debilitating. What is chronic pain doing to Australia? Well, it costs billions of dollars. I think in 2007, Access Economics did a study and it showed that I think the total cost of taking into consideration uh, loss of work, loss of contribution in other ways, medical costs, was $34 billion. Now, that's 11 years ago. Mm. So there hasn't been another estimate like that. So you can imagine it is in the billions of dollars. Wow. But that cost is also to the individual, to families. Mm. So it's the dissolution of families, it's the breakup of relationships, it's the, it, it's the loss of of that whole normal context of living. And Leanne, from a mental health point of view, what is the cost that you see? Look, I think there's no question that chronic pain is related to things like depression and anxiety. So I think once you've got mental health issues that compound the issue, it can make the pain worse. Um, and I think part of the problem is the, the modern perception we have of health as being the absence of illness. And unfortunately, that is still how we see health um, and illness. So there's this constant 
search to actually be well and healthy. And I think when you do have those mental health issues, it leads to a sense of helplessness because you feel further away from where you're meant to be, which is healthy. Um, so you see disintegration of identity, relationships, as you mentioned, um, and that further further being entrenched in, in just illness and, and unhappiness and helplessness. So, so the stats were one in five Australians suffering yes. with it. Is that the sort of amount of numbers we see coming into a pharmacy? Yes, it seeking is. Relief. Seeking relief, seeking the quick purchase, Ed, perhaps filling a prescription that's ongoing, so month after month after to month. But look, in all of this, we talk across all of our time together, a lot of mental health issues. Just get connected. We do Are You OK Day and we do Lip Timber. All of these things are important because many issues are initiated by chronic pain. I'm interested to know because I have family members who experience chronic pain, have for many years, and they've felt very unheard when they've mm. sought help. Yeah. But are we perhaps mm. too soft? I don't know whether we're too soft. I think we're overstimulated. I think we're so focused on what's going on out there. We're on screens, we're busy, we're going from one appointment to the next, so that when something happens in our body that's unfamiliar, we don't understand it. And so I think that's why um, having that validation and that understanding is such a critical component to actually recovering and working through chronic pain. Well, Gerald, you're a career pharmacist. You've spent uh, decades dispensing you know, and hearing people's distress as they come to you. Can we eradicate pain altogether, do you think? We can't, Ed. And it's a matter of essentially, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you've got to own the pain. Understand what the pain's doing to you. I'm a quality of life sort of guy, and pain certainly is the, the focus. But what effect is that pain having on your quality of life? Mm. Does it mean mm. you can't go to work? That's severe. But maybe if you're a little older, and we're all living older, you can't go and collect your grandkids from school. You can't go and bowl or play golf with your mates. And when that happens, your world falls apart, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. you lose the social contact as well. Mm -hmm. so, so we're not saying that people need to just suck it up and live with the pain. There no, has to be no. something to be done. But understand it, though. Mm. Right. Understand it. What's mm. causing the pain? Because so often, as you said, mm. we've been used to going along, buying or being prescribed a pill, mm. popping the pill, expecting instant relief from pain. It's not that easy. Mm. I, I have read that mindfulness and meditation can mm. be really helpful in mm -hmm. this regard. Mm. Absolutely. I mean, that's teaching you to be in the moment. Mm. So rather than actually switching off and avoiding the pain, which doesn't work, actually sitting mm. in it, understanding it and changing your relationship with it. So rather than reacting to it in a negative way, in an emotional way, yeah. you're actually almost looking at it as something external that you observe and have a look at the impact it's having on your life more objectively. Sure. The, there is another aspect to this in terms of the longer term management and the search for a cure, the search for the magic pill. And it's very clear that a lot of these interventions, which are part of ordinary medical practice and surgical practice, back surgery and such, really don't end up in, most of the time, necessarily with a good outcome. Back surgery, for example, 30% of people are the same, 30% oh, worse and 30% no better. Oh. But people do want to search for the cause Mm. of the pain and that's a process probably before they get to the yeah. ability to accept mm. it. Mm. So if I could counsel anybody in chronic pain, it would be don't keep searching. Mm. Don't just go and have another MRI, another CT scan. Sure, you'll find things, yes. but they may have absolutely no bearing. So yes. don't yeah. spend money, try and avoid surgery, look for those simple things. And Gerald, what about the use of opioids? I know that you have expressed great concern about this in the past. It changed earlier this year, Joe, where the availability was cut right back, and that's OK. I don't really know whether, though, it's fixed the problem. The prescribing rates are still high. It's costing a lot of money. It's costing a lot of relationships and a lot of lives because not much has changed, sadly. In what way is it costing lives? Because these are surely prescribed. Yes, I know, but they're not effective. Uh -huh. And there's an ever-increasing dependence on them. Doses get higher. Add that to a person living for a longer period of time. And, sadly, rates of opioid deaths are rising all the time. Eliane, any advice for families who are, have loved ones in their home that are poss possibly mm. depressed or at mm. least very you know, mood-altered yeah. by the pain that they're living with? 
communicate. You know, I think people with chronic pain stop talking after a while because it gets tiring. People yeah. don't listen anymore. Mm. Oh, yeah. They have another headache. That's so. right. Mm. And families are very good at getting on with things and saying, oh, they haven't complained today. They must be having a good day. Not mm. necessarily. Mm. So don't just believe what you're saying. Always assume that there's something going on underneath the surface. Gerald, you're the last in the chain generally when people are coming for mm. the medication or the well, advice. Are so you a part counsellor too? Yeah. I, I well, in many cases because they've been through these pathways that we've talked about. But I think the important thing, we all agree, it's an individual thing. It's an individual response. Own it, understand it, talk about it. The holy grail doesn't exist at mm. this stage. Maybe mm. with medicinal cannabis and other things, it might. But I don't at this think stage, medicinal cannabis is going to be the holy might grail. Might help, though. Might help, and well, who knows? But yes, we've got true, to find that out. True. But that's another big topic for true, now. That's yeah. another, yeah. That's that's another big, big, big balloon topic. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Roberta, thank you. Leanne, Gerald, as always, thank great you. advice. And uh, stay with us. Don't go away. We've got plenty more to come right after the break here on the House of Wellness. Later on the A to Z of vitamins, a boost for the bits that we don't like talking about. But next, we're turning cauliflower into a healthy rice salad for you. Stay with us, the cuisine is getting creative on the House of Wellness. Today we're whipping up a warm, healthy, comforting salad with the healing powers of turmeric. Start by gently frying slices of leek. Then blitz half a head of cauliflower into a fine rice texture. Add to the sweated leek Sprinkle in your turmeric powder. Now fold in spinach and coriander and leave to cool. Your dressing is a luscious mixture of olive oil, lemon, garlic, honey, tahini and cumin. And finally, add pistachios, cranberries, cherry tomatoes and goat's cheese to the warm salad. Great creation, Please. great creation, and well done. Uh, this one is so delicious, I can smell the goodness. I'm just going to sample it. Tell me about it. So it's a really simple recipe. Obviously, it's got cauliflower we use it as rice. It's a great gluten alternative as well. Mm. And the turmeric is such a beautiful Ooh. spice. The colour is mm. vibrant. Did you say turmeric? I love turmeric. <laughs> you know, a roll. It, adding that turmeric, though, is such an added health kick, isn't it? Look, it's got a must amount of anti-inflammatories. It's the active component in it that you actually need to add other things to. So oh. that's why we add a little bit of olive oil and we add a bit exactly. of pepper and it actually helps you absorb all the goodness. Fantastic Ooh. stuff. All right, well, why don't we get to one of our favourite parts of the show. It's time for your calls and we'll get you to stick around with us here, Zoe, to help us out. First up's Gabriella, who we met on the streets of Sydney. So I'm considering going a vegan and I just need to know what supplements are needed to replace the dairy aspect. Mm. Meat, meat stuff. Well, vegan, that's right. Well, there's a few things there, um, Ed. And, Gabriella, you need to look at, obviously, some sort of B12 supplement because you're not having meat, um, a calcium supplement because you're not having dairy, and those things need to be discussed with somebody who can guide you through because you're young, you've got a lot of developing to do, yep. so you just don't snap off and say, I'm not having this, mm. without considering the replacement. But some vegan options are just delicious too. Look, there's some great... I mean, this is a vegan option. We could take the goat's cheese out of it, but it's also mind, being mindful of what actually takes calcium out of the body. So yeah. caffeine, stress, Coca-Cola drinks. So when you are that age, we tend to not be focused enough on the whole, looking at the whole of our yeah, diet. Right. So it's important to not have too much caffeine as well. Okay. okay, thank you. Now, Maria is on the phone from Newcastle. How can we help? I've just had breast cancer mm. surgery and I just want to know what I can do to help myself to be healthy. That's a big one, isn't it? Yes, it is. After and we're looking surgery. at total recovery. Mm -hmm. So there's the after effects of often chemotherapy as well. So proper dietary advice, good food selections, appropriate supplements, certainly a women's multivitamin with lots of B, and don't push yourself, Maria, too hard. Just make it gentle, come back in and recover and be strong. Yeah. All right, let's go to a uh, worried grandmother from uh, Brisbane. Sandra is standing by. She's got a question. You might, you might be able to help us mm. out with this one as well. Sandra? My grandchildren, they don't eat fruit and vegetables at all. You can't even bribe them. And I'm really concerned how it's going to affect them in later life if they don't start eating properly. 
Honestly, this plays out in Oof. houses across the country. All over. You're good at sneaking food in with your four and a half year old, Emily. Look, I certainly am. We play a lot of games related to it, but <laughs> she should be concerned because the eating habits picked up earlier on actually can impact adulthood. Yeah, right. Um, also, statistically, it actually looks at that the percentage of when we hit puberty, if we've got a high bone, um, high body fat percentage, we are more likely to have high body fat percentages our entire mm -hmm. life. Okay. So. Be creative and remember you're the adult here. I know it's exhausting but it's repetition. We have to expose our children to at least 15 times to Good actually thing. get it's very high levels so you've got to be creative we play something called don't eat my fingers so basically we cut up lots of vegetables Love and it. she has to eat it we have the combo competition so who can make the best combo we talk about flavors colors senses yeah. and what you don't do is you don't do this when you're stressed you do this when you do have the capability of actually encouraging your children oh, to eat just like vegetables. <laughs> yeah. my bread sandwiches for you or the you are not leaving the table until that one it doesn't work very well. We all know that. All <laughs> They'll sit there forever. Don't eat my okay. fingers. I love it. Our thing. last call is Rosemary, who's called from Bundalong in Victoria. How can well, we... I'm wheat intolerant. Does that mean I have to stay away from gluten? Good one for mm. you, Zoe. Does wheat intolerant mean gluten intolerant? Not at all, but we do need to be mindful that often the products that we're eating that have wheat have gluten in them as well. Yeah. So um, a little bit, th in my advice is to obviously try and avoid all wheat-based products. But again, you can still make sure that you've got lots of good dietary fibre coming into your diet. And if it's grains that you want, there are lots of grains that obviously are not wheat-based and lots of breads and really interesting foods out there that don't, don't include uh, wheat. You've got obviously quinoa. And again, it's about looking at some of those really good rice products in there. Remember, yep. rice doesn't have wheat or gluten in it. Mm. Mm. It doesn't taste as good as the collie rice, though. No, I agree. <laughs> Great advice, you guys. Keep the calls coming. We've got loads more to come here on The House of Wellness. Still to come, why having health checks when you're feeling well could help you stay well. But next, if you want to keep your insides healthy, the A to Z of vitamins is for you. It's all happening here on The House of Wellness. Welcome back. Now, cancer is a topic that rightly or wrongly scares us all. And that's not surprising when you realise that half of us will be diagnosed with cancer at some stage in our lives. Yes, and despite incredible medical advances over the years, cancer still accounts for three out of every ten deaths in Australia. Mm. So, while research into treatment continues, there's increasing focus on early detection and intervention. Yeah, and to help explain this exciting frontier, we're joined by Dr Alana Gantz. Nice to have you back with us, Doc. Thanks for having but me. These numbers are staggering, aren't they? I mean, I mean, why is cancer such a problem in Australia? So they say there's going to be 134,000 new cases of cancer diagnosed in Australia this year. Wow. And it's going to be up to 150,000 per year in 2020. So massive, mm. massive numbers. The important message with all these cancers is generally if we can catch them early, yep. we've got much better chance of um, treating it and much better chance of cure. Well, that's what I was going to ask. What stages of our lives do we start doing the tests and what cancers can we test for? So the stage is really dependent on your individual risk factors, but for general population, the earliest one we screen for is cervical cancer. So you and I had that at 18, but really exciting news. There's been a new development and we can be much more accurate now and pick it up much earlier. So girls don't need to start screening until they're 25 years old now. Happy girls. Yeah, and it's every five years rather than two years, which is also awesome. So related actually to a discovery in Queensland, which is pretty cool, of the virus, which is what the young kids are getting in the injections oh, for, yes. yeah. Okay. See, because my mum passed um, when she was 50 of breast cancer. So I know that the, the doctors say you don't need to start testing from 40. I do it every year now just right. because I'm diligent. Do you suggest that or are you just kind of like whatever makes the patient feel comfortable? So if you have individual risk factors, so strong family history or other diseases that might increase your risk, then you really need to discuss your individual circumstance with the doctor okay. and you need to feel happy with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Over screening can have some problems. Sometimes we diagnose things that aren't necessarily a problem. Right. Um, but under screening is really where the big problem is yeah. because, you know, if the population doesn't screen, we don't pick things up. Mm -hmm. So the general recommendation for mammography, so for breast cancer picking up, um, is the age of 50, but that's if you don't have a family history. Right. Yeah. And so if you do that every two years, Breast Screen Australia thinks that we probably decrease breast cancer death by about 21 to 28 per cent. So, ma yeah, massive, but you need to go. It's uncomfortable, I know, mm. but it's important. I mean, uh, to the government's credit, there's a massive screening progress in place. Uh, you mentioned the, the breast cancer for bowel cancer as well. Everyone sent a kit on their 50th 
It's yeah. an easy test to do and send back, yes. as we know. The earlier you catch these sort of things, this is the key, right? The earlier you catch the it, the better chances. Yeah. 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 So for bowel cancer, if we catch it early, we can actually treat successfully nine out of ten bowel cancers. It's amazing. The problem we have is that I generally ask my patients about their birthday present and their one in the mail, <laughs> mm. and it's generally in the laundry or in that top drawer. So listen, it's not going to detect anything there. No, you yeah. need to actually do the test. So in the privacy of your own home, two samples, send it back in the mail, and if it's positive, it doesn't mean you have cancer, but just means you need to have that conversation yeah. and get some further testing. So what can cancers can we test for and which ones can we not test for? So for, in order to be a good screening program you need two things. You need to be able to pick it up, so there yep. needs to be early things that we can pick up, but also we need to know that that makes a difference. So there's some that we don't have any testing for, so unfortunately lung, pancreas, like some of those cancers we've made little advances in, we, we don't know how to pick them up early. Yeah. Others we can pick up early but we don't actually know if it makes a difference and a big one there is prostate cancer. Yeah. So that's one that you need to discuss individually with your doctor and work out what's right for you. All right. I mean, there are rare cancers too, but there are some of the big ones that we need to screen for. And the way you can help, if we get this right, remind yourself to go to the doc, remind your friends to get tested and stay on it as well so that sort of info could save your life. Mm -hmm. Doc, nice to see you again. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Dr Alana Gantz with us here on The House of Wellness. And, of course, if you'd like to find out any more information on that topic or any of the others we cover, head to our website. It is houseofwellness.com.au. Yes, now it is time for the A to Z of vitamins. Gerald is with us now. Thank you. Look, it's a big one. One in 20 women and one in 20 men will get a urinary tract infection or a UTI. They can be uncomfortable, painful. What can we actually do to maintain overall bladder health? Drink plenty of water. Mm -hmm. We're talking here about a container, Zoe, that's full of filtered material from the kidneys. And it's important that it keeps flushing out all the time. Now, we are um, we're built differently, men and ladies. I'll explain that later on, Ed. Um, and that means that probably women have a greater chance of catching urinary tract infections at any age. So in children and right through your life. And in fact, in older people, in older women, they are very serious issues. OK. So we need to understand that we've got to keep this tank constantly flushed. So if you do or you have suffered with a UTI, mm -hmm. could a supplement like this help support it or do you just need to take a whole lot of cranberry juice? The bacteria concerned, Zoe, is E. coli. So it, it sticks to the sides of the bladder. Okay. And what cranberry does, it's a soapy material and it stops the bacteria from adhering or sticking to the side of the bladder. So the more water you drink, whilst taking cranberry or eating cranberry, the, actually the better your bladder will feel. Not vodka cranberry. No. no. But Different. one of the yummiest medications you could prescribe, a bit of <laughs> cranberry juice, right? Well, cranberry, provided it's unsweetened, mm -hmm. because you don't want the sugar part. Uh -huh. yeah. So, But sadly, you can't drink enough cranberry juice to really make a therapeutic difference. But okay. if you enjoy it, fine. Great options. Excellent. All right, the A to Z of vitamins brought to us by Go Healthy for healthy energy and vitality. Try New Zealand's number one premium supplements, now available in Australia. And we've got more to come after the break here on the House of Wellness. And we're right across Australia on the Seven Network and the Prime Network with inspiration, smiles, advice and good food. We've got a show packed with that and much more. Next, she's an athlete, a humanitarian, a mentor and an inspiration to everyone she meets. Stay with us here on the House of Wellness. Welcome back. Well, the achievements of our next guest will leave you speechless. While competing in an ultra marathon, Taria Pitt suffered burns to 65% of her body when she was caught in a raging grass fire. Yeah, refusing to be beaten by her adversity, Taria continues to run, has written two books, is a highly sought after motivational speaker, and has just become a mama. Ah. Taria, welcome. Nice Th to see thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's great to boy. be here. So beautiful. He's pretty cute. I might be biased, but he's pretty cute. <laughs> no, he is. I'll yeah, tell you. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> now, I have to say, for me personally, I, I was fangirling on you behind the scenes. Huge inspiration for me. And thank you. And so, so many Australians. Um, I wouldn't want to say overachiever, but you've done a lot of things. Mm. Like I said, best-selling author, mindset coach, two-time Iron Man humanitarian, and you've raised over a million bucks for Interplast. I mean, it doesn't stop. 
Yeah, when you lift it up like that, I think maybe I should just rest. <laughs> maybe I should just rest on my laurels. No, but I think that's, for me, that's how I get enjoyment from life. I love living life to the full. I love going on adventures with my partner. And I really like to make the most of each day. Mm. And that's my philosophy. Yeah. Well, as we can see, you wear many hats, many strings to your bow. And as if you have any spare time left now, you've got a nearly one-year-old, you're beautiful Yeah, 10 months. Yeah. yeah. Um, has, has motherhood changed everything? Look, it's changed everything completely. I always thought, you know, once I was a mum, I'd sign up and do, a, you know, a really crazy, huge endurance race. And I didn't really feel compelled to do that at all. Yeah. Just, Were you just nesting? Just well, I was, I was nesting and I just I didn't have the inclination to go on an eight-hour bike ride. I just didn't want to do it. So I think that's really important for me to realise, you know, this year and potentially the next few years, it is all about Huckabye mm. and my life has to fit in and around him. And yeah. that's what I want to do anyway. And Beautiful you're a mum too, that would be... It's hard. You can't go bike riding for eight hours when you need to breastfeed. No. <laughs> no, you definitely, you definitely can't. And you wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to either. That's you don't the want thing. To leave her. Beautiful yeah. name. What's Hakavai mean again? It means dance of the water in Tahitian because Beautiful. I was born in Tahiti. Yes. Um, I think um, the Maoris like to claim you because my husband's Maori well, and he was like, no, she's Maori. And I was like, well, oh. no, but Tahitians are, are, are Polynesian and so are Maldives. Yeah, yeah, so it's under the same umbrella. Yeah. Well, now, well like enough cousins. of these eight-hour bike rides. You've done a couple of Ironman. I think we've got some footage of you uh, triumphant in Hawaii, which is, of course, the World Championships as well. Yeah, that's I mean, pretty special. Any of my lycra-clad uh, buddies will know this is the pinnacle of Ironman yeah. racing. It's so hard and hot. And yeah, what, yeah, what are your yeah. memories from the race? Oh, just how much I hated the day. <laughs> it was tough. It was long. It was hot. I was dehydrated. And the whole day I just wanted to give up. And I think that's why I was so proud of myself when I crossed the finishing line because I just battled with that desire to quit all day. Mm. So, yeah, I haven't done an Ironman since. <laughs> <laughs> you need a break. That's a big break. I need a break. Well, I need a break. So why did you choose to be an ambassador for a product like Aven? Well, there's a couple of different reasons. First of all, I've got extremely sensitive skin. Mm -hmm. So I need to be really careful about what type of products I use on my skin. But more than that, it's SPF 50 plus. Mm -hmm. So it's a really high sun protecting factor. And of course, I love being in the water. I love swimming, I love surfing. So it's water resistant. So it ticks, ticks, all, the boxes. ticks all the boxes for me, yeah. Um, and especially with a baby, do you know how hard it is applying sunscreen yes. to a child? I'm going into this stage now, oh. yeah. first summer. Yeah. So it's almost spray. like a, like a crocodile hunter, you know. Oh, it's like getting it out. A, it's like a, a yeah. turbocharged possum in a sack. <laughs> you can't hold them down. To that's get it, yes. Yeah, so that's why I, one of my favourite product is the spray. And also when you're by yourself to do the back. It's hard, yeah. yeah. It's hard, you unless you've got a really good looking, you know, gladiator man with you. Which you well, mean, I like to carry them with me to yeah, the beach but, often. Yeah, but if they're not with you, the spray is perfect for that. Yeah. But then there's also a really good emulsion that you can use on your face before you apply your makeup as well. So it doesn't do that funny yeah. lifting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Thing. Beautiful. So Lovely yeah. to meet you. Perfect. Thanks Lovely so to meet you guys. Thank you so us. much for having me. Thank good you, luck Maria. with all your endeavours. Yeah, it was a real pleasure to be to. here. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be back with Stacks more right after the break. Welcome back. Well, our house hero this week is an inspirational story. We meet a man whose life was struck by tragedy when he was involved in an accident while at work. Pete Pellegrini lost his right leg when it was crushed by a shipping container. Suddenly, he was faced with the challenges of a life bound to a wheelchair. This self-confessed adrenaline junkie refused to slow down. Instead, he turned to indoor skydiving and has taken his life to new heights. Indoor skydiving has helped me more than I can ever explain. Not only have they learned, I've learned how to fly all over again, but I've actually learned how to live all over again. I had an accident back in 2015. I was out of the mines and I was actually crushed by a sea container and run over by a crane. I had to have a left side hip replacement, amputated right leg. So I was extremely depressed. I just I did not know where my life was going. I'm looking down at the sheets and seeing only one leg there. So I said to the doctor and suggested the indoor skydiving because I knew it was a low impact sport in a, um, in a sort of in a safe environment. And he said, I highly recommend you don't do that. 
I said, well, that's my life, mate. You can get stuffed as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, for us, Peter is a true hero. Yeah, he's blown us away at this competition. He's really been amazing um, for everybody here. Five minutes until the four-way FS. Serving beer chickens, bacon bacon, gold supermax. What we're doing here is the National Indoor Skydiving Competition. It's held once a year and just competing with uh, different styles, different types of skydiving. When he's in the tunnel and flying in the wind, he's um, able to fly his body just as freely as, as the rest of us. He doesn't let any, anything get in his way. And so I think when other people see that, that is something that they can take away from his participation in our sport. I was named All Abilities Ambassador only a couple of months ago, so it's quite new for me. So I'm very, very excited to try to just get it out to a bit of a broader community because we've got such a safe environment. We're establishing particular suits for people that are paraplegic so they can, you know, get around and fly themselves. It's Peter doesn't class himself as a hero, but he really is. He doesn't let anything limit him, which is a real testament to his character and, and his strength of character. It's like anything in life, it doesn't matter if you have a disability or not, go out there and grab it. And if you're not gonna, and if it's, if you can't grab it, find a way to. Great story. We talked wow. about pain management during the show, didn't we? Getting out there, getting interactive, yes. and maybe even a little bit distracted too. All things that help. It <laughs> has been an inspirational show. Well, I'm feeling good <laughs> and grateful. Yes, aren't we fortunate? But to have such stories like that to show us our way when we mm -hmm. may be struggling, mm -hmm. what an opportunity, what a fortunate thing we've What got. about the eye-opener with all the waste of our food? 20%, yeah, $20 billion dollars yes. worth. Yes. Billion and mm. billion. And what about Hats. someone who can't hit a rubbish bin huh? with three feet? <laughs> OK, so... <laughs> How much are we wasting each year? Well, $3,800. Yes, yes, and I did is. miss a couple of shots, so give me Four. one more. I'll, I'll go left-handed. Please, go and you can please do let him get this, please. Look at that. Oh! oh finally! It By the magic of television. <laughs> oh, with the left hand, ladies and gentlemen. If you'd like some more info from the show today, too, just Google House of Wellness. And be sure to join us next week. We're going to be learning the secret to winning people over. Ooh. I'll keep chipping away with Stop you, Marshall. I'll keep chipping away. That is one for everybody. And as summer approaches, too, we've got everything you need to know about staying sun safe. Yes. Thanks, team. You've been Thank so supportive you. to Good me today. Always. Thanks to our Great. friends at Chemist Warehouse as well. We hope you all have a healthy and well week. Give me another shot at that. Bye. We'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs>